you make me feel like you're taking me for a ride, thinking this is worth a million pounds today. Because it isn't. Hello, my name's John Redman. I'm the MD and founder of the Ride 25, the ultimate cycling adventure holiday company. Today, I'm looking for an investment of £250,000 in return for a 25% stake in Ride 25. I was personally looking for a life-changing adventure when a friend of mine suggested, why don't we cycle all the way to Australia? So Ride 25 was born. At Ride 25, we offer the opportunity to cycle all the way from the UK to Sydney, Australia in 25 individual chunks. We organise everything from the medics, the mechanics, the meals, the hotels, the support crew. We cover about 355 miles over a four-day period. We target three core sections, corporates, charities, and the biggest opportunity is the consumer cycling market, we believe. This year, we will take 1,000 people cycling. We aim to have 4,000 cyclists by 2018, with a turnover of 5.3 million and £900,000 net profit. Ambitious financial projections from cyclist John Redman. And you get a nice Ride25 oh, cap as well. Thank you very much. Who's looking for a £250,000 investment. In return, he's offering a 25% share in his company, which specialises in globe trotting cycling holidays. Thank you very much, guys. But Deborah Meaden wants to find out a bit more about the deal being peddled. Can I just summarise to you what I think I just heard? It's a one event a year. No, it's multiple events starting all the time in multiple holidays from the UK in chunks to Australia. OK, so you've got almost like this map of events and Absolutely. you can jump into those events at any point on that journey between London and yeah, And then you and get the appropriate Australia. badge for the appropriate bit you've done. So you can go all the way to Australia using our routes. And the idea is to create the routes once, sell them many times. You're really offering logistics, aren't you? Yes, we do take all the hassle out of travelling with your bike, but it's, it's on our predefined routes. So we've already been to the coffee stops. We know it's a proper coffee stop. It's not a gazebo at the side of the road. And where are most of your clients at the moment? The majority of our profit this year will come from corporates. We've got one company, Liberty Global, we're taking 500 people cycling uh, in one massive event. So how much is one of these bookings? They're £1,250 a trip on average, so they're not cheap but we believe they're excellent value and we price them and we put a lot of quality into the trips. How many consumers do you need in a year to make this a good business or to break even? We're planning to take 1,000 people cycling this year. We've already got 800 of those committed, so we know we can see the money. However, I think there's an opportunity to create a cycling travel brand that has some brand value and could be much bigger. John has so far managed to steer a course through some early interrogation of his business model. But his self-confessed car fanatic, Peter Jones, about to dish up a dose of road rage. John, the thought of 500 cyclists clogging up the road system when people are trying to go about their busy day-to-day -day lives just because somebody is rich enough and has got the time to go and do it, I have a real issue with it. I find it difficult enough living out in the country as it is, when I go and see and go through groups of, like, 50 coming down the road. And it, it drives me up the wall. We never start them off in that volume of size. That's the total size of the event. Uh, the, no, but 500, event. you've got to have you, to have... That's like, that's like... You've got to be doing 100 an hour. Yeah, most of it... So that particular event starts in four separate locations and all finishes in Amsterdam. So you could have a stream of eight hours long worth of cyclists on a road system going from here to Amsterdam? Le technically, yes, you could. I think that's bloody annoying. An uphill battle for John as petrol head Peter Jones takes an instant dislike to the entrepreneur's plan to put more bikes on the road. Will he get an easier ride from Tuka Suleiman? The dragon with contacts in the cycling industry. John, Tuka, um, I have a bike website called Bikes. I know, yeah. You mentioned you've got 80% booked already going up front. Yeah. 
and I'm assuming that you booked them and they've given you a deposit. Yeah, we, from a cash point of view, it's a great business. Yeah. Great. So therefore, if they paid you 50%, you must have half a million pound in the bank today. Not quite half a million. We don't. We take 250 pound deposit, but yeah, we've got money in the bank here. So why are you here? And the main reason we're here is we haven't got the knowledge to grow a consumer uh, business. If you look what Crystal did in the 80s and put skiing as, a, as a, a, an everyday holiday, before skiing was something that only the rich and famous people would do, it wasn't a normal holiday. It's cycling at the moment, you don't have conversations with people in the pub about, oh, what are you doing for your cycling holiday this summer? Well, I want to change There's that. There's a difference. Yeah. Snow, you have to travel. Ride a bike, you're doing your back street. You can't cycle on that sort of scenery. It's much nicer to go cycling through Tuscany and enjoy a nice lunch in the sunshine and have an adventure. An entrepreneur with passion for his product. But where exactly is this business heading? Peter Jones wants to know how he intends to spend any potential investment. John, can I just ask, what are you going to do with a quarter of a million pounds? The big reason we need the money is we've only got the availability to book to the bottom of Italy. So we need to go and basically finish building the product. So we've got the product is at the moment 25 individual holidays, but actually we've only designed and perfected um, five of those. So we need to basically pay people to go and drive the roads, test the hotels, negotiate the deals, build the actual packages that we can then sell. Because you can't take a paying customer and stick them on a road that you haven't been down. The revelation that John only currently offers five of the 25 routes his company name suggests has raised eyebrows in the den. Will Nick Jenkins be prepared to finance the development of the missing 20 journeys? I think you have made a rod for your own back with the Ride 25 concept. Some of the best cycling in the world is in between here and the Alps. And you want to spend some money extending that all the way out to Sydney. But I can, I can see how you're going to really struggle, particularly with European customers wanting to go all the way out to Asia for a five-day bike ride and all the way back because the cost of the flights and the time and the inconvenience involved um, is, is going to become a barrier. So I can see how what you would end up with is a whole load of really, really successful, profitable legs and then a whole load of very unprofitable legs. I'm afraid I can't invest in it, so okay. I'm out. Breathtaking views, perhaps. But for Nick Jenkins, the road this business is travelling down is littered with losses, and he wastes no time in pulling out of the deal. And Sarah Willingham also has some concerns. John, where I really struggle with it is I think there'll be a lot of loss-making trips. And ultimately, you're going to end up having to underpin the business with what you're doing currently, which is all of your corporate work. Whilst you've got all of that going on, to also then try and open new territories, it's like, oh, you know, I, my brain's about to explode thinking about it. So for me, it's not an investment opportunity and I don't know what I would bring to the party and I'm out. Two dragons gone, united in the view that John's big idea may prove too tricky to pull off. Will Deborah Meaden, with her background in the leisure industry, see the potential in pedals. John, I think you really have got something here. Thank you. But as you grow, the logistics you're, you're going to find tougher than they've been so far. And I think that even the quarter of a million pound that you're asking for here, that's going to be a drop in the ocean. You are going to need more cash, quite a lot more cash, to do the things that you want to do. I won't be investing. I'm out. I've got so many concerns about it. The way that you've pitched this, you make me feel like you're taking me for a ride, thinking that this is worth a million pounds today. Because it isn't. You don't have a business at the moment. Genuinely, I'd feel and worry about the fact that you're not quite there with the model. So for that reason, I'm out. Only Tuka Suleiman remains. With his business experience in the cycling industry, it's down to him to help or hinder John's chances of investment. 
I like the fact you were doing London to Geneva. The moment you said you want to do everything else, you want to spend the money trying to do all these other trips, you know, red flashing lights came to my eyes and said, you, you're trying to rule the world before you can walk. And that, to me, spells disaster. In a way, I like your big thinking, but I think your big thinking will get you into trouble, and it's not going to get you into trouble with my money. So I know I could do a lot for you. We can promote that for you in all sorts of ways. But I think you've put a risk factor to the strategy. And for that reason, I'm not going to invest in you, okay. and I'm out. Tuka Suleiman punctures John's final hope of investment. As the dragons fail to be convinced, the entrepreneur can deliver his vision of cycle holidays, stretching all the way to Down Under. The Australia dream brought him down. If he didn't have that dream, he'd want less money, he'd make it more yeah. attractive to build a business. It wasn't harder than my toughest bike ride, but it was hard. I think people questioned my ambition. Nothing wrong with being a little bit over-ambitious. But fundamentally, uh, no cigar.